What if there was a world where we were able to travel to Mars within weeks rather than months? Or were we able to travel outside of our solar system within a lifetime? What if we were able to do this while minimizing carbon dioxide usage and harnessing the power of the sun? Well, investigating a seemingly simple yet incredible process known as nuclear fusion just might be the start. Before I begin to talk about what nuclear fusion is, I would like to discuss why I, a high school student, am interested in this technology. A few months ago in my physics class, we were tasked with a presentation from a list of energies to choose one and do a presentation on it. My group chose nuclear energy because that sounded the coolest. I mean, when you think of nuclear, you think of big explosions, right? From a little presentation turned into hours upon hours of researching this incredible energy source. So what is nuclear fusion? Picture a bunch of tiny pebbles. If you were to combine these pebbles and form a large rock, it would take a lot of effort to do so, as pebbles don't generally combine with each other that easily. And once the big rock is formed, a bunch of pebble dust debris would be left over. A similar feat holds true for nuclear fusion, in that different specific types of hydrogen are fused together to form helium, releasing a lot of energy. It can be incredibly difficult to do so as hydrogens are positive and positive things repel each other. So it takes a lot of effort to put them together. But once hydrogen is fused to create nuclear fusion, it can release a lot of energy. In fact, this powerful energy is released so much that it's millions of times more powerful than fossil fuels. As of now, we as a society have not been able to explore the vastness of the universe due to chemically powered rockets. Don't get me wrong, chemically powered rockets are incredible. We've been able to see so much of the universe with them, but we haven't been able to go that far yet just because of their power. Certain chemically powered rockets, such as those from SpaceX, have propulsion made of fuels from kerosene, alcohols, and other liquids. When we talk about space exploration, we often compare this number to the speed of light. For example, according to NASA, it takes approximately three days to reach the moon. And it takes light approximately 1.3 light seconds to do the same feat. According to Einstein, we can't actually travel the speed of light, but if we're able to harness the power of the sun, the bringer of our light, we can be doing so much more in terms of space exploration. So you might be thinking, Nicole, nuclear fusion, nuclear energy, isn't that the stuff that causes radiation and can kill people? Well, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, compared to the typical amounts of nuclear energy that you may be thinking of, nuclear fusion releases little to no radioactive waste, which therefore means it would not harm any of its surroundings practically, which is amazing. Okay, so you might also be thinking, okay, so if it's so good, why haven't we been able to harness it if it's going to fix all of our space exploration dilemmas? According to the Thermo Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor Fusion for Energy Agency, there aren't that many of the specific types of hydrogen that we need to travel to sorry, form nuclear fusion as this comes from outer space on asteroids, and they don't often hit the planet. And due to its scarcity, it can become very difficult to use and very expensive. Additionally, it takes a lot of energy to get nuclear fusion to work. To be able to combine these different types of hydrogens that are positively charged and so small has been proven an incredible challenge that we've only just been able to complete. If we are talking about the future of rockets and what could be possible, NASA's rockets are often a reference in terms of what nuclear fusion rockets could look like. But it's incredibly important to note that nuclear fusion is a constantly changing source, as well as space exploration. So what could be done now could be very different in the future. And what I'm going to be discussing today relates to nuclear fusion and rockets, but there are other things, of course, that go into how the rocket can get up into the space. So to begin with the nuclear fusion propulsion. 
Due to the fact that the hydrogens are positive, they must be heated to extremely high temperatures in order to allow them to fuse together. These hydrogens are going to be fused into what's called a plasma. So this is a state of matter. So there's solids, liquids, gases. A plasma is a electrically charged gas. And this gas is extremely hot as it's going to be a similar temperature to the sun, approximately 100 million degrees Celsius. And this is according to the International Atomic Energy Agency. And these hot temperatures are going to be allowed the positively charged hydrogens to to come together and not be repelled due to their positivity. Next, positively charged magnets are going to be placed around this plasma. These positively charged magnets are going to be able to manipulate the plasma in such a way to allow the hydrogens to fuse together and also to prevent the plasma and the reaction of nuclear fusion to reach the outer surrounding propulsion area. Propulsion in general works similarly to swimming. So according to Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. We have a swimmer here. When the swimmer hits the wall, they're going to hit the wall and the wall is going to push them back further into the water. A similar feat holds true for nuclear fusion in that the weight of the rocket is going to be pushing down, the thrust in the engine pushes down, of the, weight, the weight in the rocket pushes down on the thrust, which then allows the nozzle and by having the weight of the rocket pushed out against the thrust in the engine, therefore pushing the thrust in the engine down and out through the nozzle. The outside of the rocket in general is going to be made of very, very strong equipment as nuclear fusion is incredibly strong and powerful. So often they can be used of tungsten, which is going to aid in particle irradiation, lead and beryllium, which aid in particle manipulation, and lithium, which is going to protect from any explosions from nuclear fusion. And the rocket's ascent into space is going to begin as chemically powered, according to the Department of Energy Agency, just because of how powerful nuclear fusion is and what, we've dis and what has been seen so far with nuclear energy in general. It cannot allow the rocket to ascend into space, but once it reaches a certain magnitude, nuclear fusion will begin and be able to set the rocket further into the sky. So yes, the prospect of nuclear fusion is incredible. However, not only is that the case, I firmly believe it can be a source for good. Much of society, today's society talks about climate change and how our planet is continuously deteriorating. Being able to use this incredible technology that does not emit CO2 usage and does not necessarily harm its surrounding is going to be a game changer. And as mentioned, we've only just begun to really harness what nuclear fusion can really look like. So it's very important as the next generation to be researching into this topic and to be exploring what nuclear fusion can really do for our future. Rockets contribute 500 times more than airplanes to our climate change predicament and they release 1,000 tons of soot into the atmosphere each year, which is a lot. And as discussed today, the impacts of energy or climate change are so important, and it's really important as the next generation, as mentioned, to really be interested in this and to explore what nuclear fusion is, what can it can hold for our future, to be able to explore more of space, discover crucial questions that we may have of life and more. So nuclear fusion is truly what we should be discussing in the future to be able to see the universe and to be able to know everything. Thank you.